That's it. Uh, very warm welcome. Hopefully you can see my screen and hopefully you can hear me. You can't hear me. I have. I've got the microphone on. If someone could just say, uh, yes, you. Oh, great. Okay. Anna can hear me. Sorry. Yes, you can. Great. Thanks, Jean. Appreciate it. Lovely. Thank you, Alan. Brilliant. Just move the chat out the way. I thought I'd start with uh, rather than with the um, the multiple rank uh, the multiple uh, indices. I thought I'd start with the Renko's today because um, this is just a terrific way to use a Renko chart. It's a blend of using a time and a non-time based chart. So you're using the Renko chart at the top, which is set to the same time frame as the chart at the bottom. This is on 15 second. This is on 30 second, and this is on a minute. So all pretty quick. I've got the YM running here because it's been uh, moving strongly higher, very nicely higher, really nice moves. And with the Renko optimizer, it's just so easy. We just select the time frame. I'll just check that this is set to the correct one. This is on 15 second. Click it on there. Just let it settle so it's coming back with 13. And basically, we're trading, uh, obviously, the, the YM, which the smallest denomination is a point. And on the mini DAO, that's $5 a point. On the bid for trading, the big DAO is $25 a point. And can I also say that there are also now very, very popular micro uh, futures, which are a tenth the size. Not only, obviously, a tenth the size in terms of, of what they yield, but a tenth the size in terms of the margin that's required to support these contracts. These are big contracts. You know, we're talking a few thousand dollars here just to trade one of these. And if you move into the ES and uh, the uh, uh, the NQ and you move into other contracts like gold, etc., you know, you're talking thousands of dollars to support one futures contract. So if you're relatively new to trading index futures, I would urge you to have a look at the E-minis. They were introduced last, last year. They're hugely popular, which means they're very liquid. So you'll trade with nice, smooth price action, but you're trading at a tenth the size of these contracts. So much lower margin requirements, uh, much uh, smaller risk on the table. It's just a great way to learn. So I'd urge you to, to have a look at those if you're not familiar with them. So we're now trading this on 13. So this is basically 13 points. Each of these bricks is now 13 points. In other words, $65. This is on 20. This is on 30 seconds. So we're talking 100 bucks uh, a brick here. And over on 26, that's 130. So it's just a really perfect combination of trading a Renko chart, which is independent of time. And you then have the advantage of trading the time-based chart below where you see all the volume price analysis uh, methodology in exactly the same way. So basically, you're trading um, a perfect combination of a non-time-based chart. And the reason that non-time-based charts are so powerful is that they reveal momentum because the metric that governs this particular chart is obviously 13, it's 13 points. Now, as soon as those 13 points have gone through the uh, through that particular measurement, then the brick will form and move on to the next one. And that is independent of time. There's no time governing, governing how fast or slowly those 13 points come through the market. And when the market's obviously fast moving, the bricks will move very quickly. When the market is slowing down, as is a little bit at the moment, then it'll be a little bit more sluggish. The bricks will close at different times, at a slower time. And therefore, each one builds at a different rate, which is not true of a time-based chart. When you move to a time-based chart, this is 15 seconds. So each of these brick closes off after 15 seconds. That's all there is to it. So you never actually see momentum. So what you see on non time based charts like Renko and also Tick to, to, to in exactly the same way, because they're not, not de dependent on time, you will see momentum revealed. And, and it's almost as if, if you imagine, for example, if you take a one minute candle down here at the bottom on a one minute chart, you take any one of these candles, they're, they're in a minute time frame. But within that minute, you will have a lot of Renko bricks. So it's almost as if you're seeing inside the candle itself. It's such a powerful way of trading. And the other, um, obviously, benefit of it is not only are we trading in, on a single Renko chart, here we're trading multiples. And in exactly the same way as you have the trend monitor here, you've got the trend monitor's blue, the trend monitor's blue. It also works in exactly the same way, obviously, as it does on the time-based chart. 
So it just gives you an instant heads up. You're looking here, for example, what am I looking at here? You can see the buying, the selling, the weakness, the strength coming in. You've got a little bit of a uh, little bit of weakness coming in here. You know, we said saw that we had some higher volume coming in, a little bit of weakness, a wick to the upper body. We've got a doji here. We've rolled over. We're coming back down to the volume point of control. So we know we're not going to go very far. We know we can expect a congestion to build at this level because we're at the volume point of control on that particular time frame. We just pop up the, uh, this is the 30 second, equally quick chart, similar sort of thing. We get an injection of uh, volume coming into this particular candle, but look at the spread of the candle. It's relatively narrow. And this is what you're looking at the whole time. If that is your, let's suppose that's your benchmark candle, you said, okay, well, that amount of volume equates to that amount of price action. Then why have I got double the amount of volume? But this similar, in fact, slightly less in the way of a price spread. So it's just giving you a visual perspective. And bear in mind, this is a very quick chart. It's a great way to learn. But it also, the principles are exactly the same. Whatever you're looking at, whether you're looking at a, a 15 second chart or a one month chart or a daily chart or an hourly chart, the principles are exactly the same. So we're now moving into congestion phase at the moment. You can see it here, the trend dots. The trend dots will always change first. The trend monitor takes a more considered view of the price action. Just go and see what's happening on the other indices. And the reason we're seeing a pause point at the moment, I'll just pull this over. This is the VIX I've got running on the right hand side here. Just pull this in, just pop that up full size. This is on trading view. And what we're seeing right now, this is the daily. So we've had the volatility and we've had this weakness here. And now we're starting to see the VIX starting to fall. We're back down at 28.8. This is it on five. This is it on one minute. This is it on 10 minutes. So basically, the VIX is tracking lower on an intraday basis. And therefore, you expect to see the indices moving higher. That is the inverse relationship that uh, basically ties the two together. This is the workspace with the three indices, what I call the three sisters. A lot, in, a lot of the industry call it the three sisters. This is the YM on the left. This is on the daily time frame now. Daily for the NQ, the NASDAQ, and daily for the ES, which is the S&P 500. And basically what we're seeing is we are seeing, broadly speaking, pretty much uh, the same sort of price action. And if you've been following us over the last few weeks and months, and certainly following these markets, you will know for a fact that there has been a lot of divergence. We've had uh, NQ rising strongly, and we've had uh, YM selling off on the same day which is unusual. But today, it seems that, uh, you know, we're all moving in the same direction. We're recovering these losses. And our, only our opinion, but our opinion for what it's worth is this is just simply another of those very strong uh, corrections. It's an opportunity for uh, the market makers and insiders to uh, restock, to frighten the market, not to sell off too hard, but just enough to, uh, to get traders and investors selling off uh, their stock, dumping in panic, and then the uh, market makers move in, pick it up, and uh, off we go, off up to the next leg higher. We also had a lot of volatility triggers on the day as well, which are indicative of that sort of price action. As you can see them here. We didn't get one on the YM, but we certainly got one on the NQ here. We had one here as well on the ES. So that's what we're seeing right now. Let's just have a quick check around, see what else is going on. Let's have a look at uh, oil. Oil's been pretty bearish um, for the last uh, few days. Written, on that, written around that quite extensively. Just pop the daily chart up here, which is interesting. We've got a volatility trigger yesterday. We had a very uh, solid down day yesterday, but you can see the market is now trading back inside the spread of that candle, which is what we always expect to see. Either that, in other words, congestion, just pull that out, just uh, highlights it a bit more significantly like that. Or we'd like to see a reversal, but at the very least, we expect to see you know, the market trading around this level within the spread of the candle. That's what the volatility trigger does. It gives you that heads up as to what to expect next in terms of price action. Just seeing what's going on in the first faster time frames, trading around the volume point of control here. Coming up to the volume point of control here, so expecting congestion, just pop this chart open. Uh, these levels up and down here, these are on the accumulation distribution indicator. These are basically price based. They're giving you a, uh, a an insight into the strength of those regions because you can see here, these are very thin lines. 
And basically what the indicator does is it presents the line more thickly depending on how many times these have been tested. This one's been tested seven times, so it's quite a thick level. And that's what the indicator does. It's basically um, thickening the line every time there is a test or retest which holds on that particular level. So you get this very visual um, representation of support and resistance. This is not me drawing lines you know, according to how, how I consider them to be important. It's the indicator doing it through the, the metric of how many times a level has been tested and holds. And more importantly, when you get these very strong levels, we've got this red line here, we've got the blue one below it. When they appear in clusters like this, then that is going to be an extremely strong level based on price through which the, uh, the market has to, excuse me for a moment. Sorry, I just had a frog in my throat. Through which the market has to penetrate. And to penetrate there is going to take more effort to get through those regions. And as Alan mentioned, support and resistance is a key plank of technical analysis, certainly a key plank of volume price analysis as well. As I say, when they appear as clusters like these two here, that is going to be a strong region. You can see what happened here. It actually capped it off and it reversed. So there's the metric of support and resistance through the prism of price, which is what this is based on, but also through the prism of the volume, this great chunk of volume here, which is associated with the volume point of control here. And what you're seeing is those, those areas, those layered areas where volume is heavy or volume is falling or volume is light. And the importance of that is that from a, a trading perspective, if you're trading in these very heavy regions of price where uh, volume where you are now, where there's a lot of orders sitting there, there's a lot of uh, congestion, you know, you're likely to see the price just congest around these regions. But once the market gets to these lower regions, if it breaks through to 3750, 55 onwards, you know, this volume is falling away. Therefore, the effort down here to get through these levels is lower. And therefore, from a trading perspective, if you were looking this to take a long, for example, if we see this market rally and get up to this region, then from a, a trading and taking a long position, it's happy days because the volume is falling away. So from a volume perspective, we've got very little in the way of resistance. And from a price perspective, certainly on this time frame at any rate, we've only got this level here. So it's all about support and resistance, but not only through the prism of price, but also through the prism of volume. You can see what's going on. It's very visual. We've got it at the volume at point of control. The yellow dash line is on one. It's on three. It's on five. You've got this very strong level here coming into play of price space. You can see that's actually hit it there. It's, it's capped it off again here. You can see how strong this region is. So there's 26 different reasons as to you know, why this market is going to struggle at this level and is not just going to carry on in a nice trend higher. It's going to at the very least congest and quite possibly reverse. It depends on, on the volume profile associated with the consequent price action. Let's just go back to the YM, just see what's going on there. <clears throat> Let's go back to the multiples. There we are. Still trading in congestion. Let's go on to the time based. Let's go and have a look at them. This one, there we go. This is basically now we're looking at just the YM in terms of a multiple array of time frames. So we've got 15 second, which is a, a time frame I use uh, hugely. Uh, because it gives me all the information about what is coming up at me in terms of the one minute, three minute, five minutes, so on and so forth, because everything happens from the fastest time frame outwards. It's, it's like the, the pebbles in a pond. If you throw a pebble into a pond, you get the ripples out from that where the pebble lands, and it's exactly the same here. The fastest time frame starts the, the change in trend or the congestion or the reversal, whatever it is, will always start in your fastest, and then it gradually ripples through across the time frames into the slower time frames on down right the way out through down to I've just got the 15 minute here, but ultimately it will go through to the hourly. Just pop that up to see what's going on here. This was the open. You always get the surge in, in volume. It's part and parcel. It doesn't valid, invalidate what went on through here on Globex. As I've said many times before, Trading Globex is perfectly valid. I know a lot of traders say that's uh, nonsense. I'm sorry, I disagree. Uh, if you actually trade Globex when it's purely trading electronically, the price action is much smoother. There's far less volatility. 
Um, and I would say it's a more straightforward way of trading. Certainly in the first sort of half an hour of trading, when the cash markets open up, you're subjected to a lot of volatility inevitably. Um, and it, it, it's, it's purely because particularly if you're trading on the ES, then you will be trading with the algos as well, which make the price action a lot more choppy. Um, and in my opinion, certainly in those early minutes of the open, more difficult to trade. To see where we're going. Yeah. And I've got the time and sales window down here. I'm not going to go into that in great detail at the moment. But this is basically time and sales um, running through. And you can see the orders running down the side here. I'm not interested in the onesie twosies. What I'm interested in is when it comes through as a block, 20, 30, 40 contracts going through and the reaction of that within the market. It's still pretty bullish. Let's just have a quick look over on the yen complex, which I think I've got up here. Here we go. There we go. This is basically what you want to see if you're trading risk uh, risk on, uh, which we are at the moment. Then this is what you want to see. Then the, the uh, essentially yen selling across the complex. In other words, the the selling of the yen is universal. It's not unusual to see the dollar yen down here because the dollar yen is an unusual currency pair. It is not. It is very different to these other currency pairs purely because it's the currency of first reserve versus the, the Japanese yen. And it does not trade in the way that you perhaps might expect it to trade. It is a technical currency to trade. And a lot of Forex traders think it trades the same way and it doesn't. We go through it in detail in the Forex trading education program to explain to you why it trades in the way it does. And the fact that it doesn't follow convention of uh, its brothers and sisters to in, in exactly the same way. So it's not unusual to see the dollar yen down here, but certainly the rest of the complex, these guys up here, this is what you want to see. You want to see these pointing sharply high. You want to see them all together. This is on a variety of time frames. We've got 3, 10, and 15 here. New Zealand yen has been soaring higher. The Aussie yen, you know, this is all about risk. This is all about risk on and risk off. And when you boil it down into its bare essentials of what you're actually doing in the market, all you're interested in is really whether you're trading risk on or risk off, because that's all the money markets are about. Whether you're trading bonds, whether you're trading stocks, whether you're trading commodities, whether you're trading forex, it's all about risk. In other words, money chasing higher risk for higher returns or lower risk for lower returns, safe haven, in other words. And that's all it's about. And whatever you look at in the market will be reflected, whether you're looking at bond prices, bond yields, whether you're looking at commodity prices, whether you're looking at forex, whether you're looking at safe haven currencies, risk currencies, uh, gold, whatever it is, all of that will be encapsulated in that very simple dynamic of risk on, risk off. It's just a, it's just a seesaw. That's really all it is. And it's constantly reflected. And you're seeing it reflected all the time on the VIX, which is the archetypal uh, measurement of risk, if you will. And the reason that we're seeing congestion at the moment, you can see it here. We've had a little bit of a rally in the VIX. You know, it's 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 sort of pausing. It's gone into congestion, gone into its shell a little bit. So on one minute, you know, it's it's going sideways. We've got the same on five minute here, moving sideways. Pause point here on 10. And obviously on the, on the daily, you've got this very tiny wick forming. The sentiment obviously is still still very bullish bearish on the VIX, but at the moment, you know, it's moving sideways. Let's pop that back over there. So you're just constantly putting all this together and let's go back onto the multiple Renko, see where we are. Okay, we're trading sideways is what we expect to see. You know, there's nothing going on at the moment. We just have to wait and be patient, keep an eye on the VIX. It's just ticked down a point or two. It's gone from 28.9 to 28.8. So, you know, maybe we'll get a little bit of a reaction. Really, what you want to see is a, a decent move. If we're going to see a decent trend break out from here, then you want to see the VIX uh, start to, to drop away again, which it's not doing at the moment, a little bit sluggish. Let's just go back to our time-based charts. If I can find them, where are they? Where are we? There we are. That's the one I want. There we go. Okay, we're on the multiple time frames again. 
decent volume here under this candle, but we got a wick to the upper body. So, you know, there's a little bit of weakness there, but uh, essentially the bullish momentum is is still, you know, the market is still trying to rally higher. It's still trying to, to, to recover a lot of those losses. Managed to move away from the volume point of control here. Moved away from here. Let's just pop that one up. Okay, you can see the volume here is falling away. If we can get up to 960 and through, then you know we should be out the other side. But it depends what we've got down on five. Let's go and have a look on five. Similar sort of thing, falling away. Let's go and have a look on 10. Okay, same sort of thing. Let's change that. That is on 15. Let's pull that one up full size. Okay, we've got the Camarilla on here as well. So we've gone through the R3, which is uh, which is a good sign. We're moving up into a low volume area here. You're constantly up and down the time frames, constantly looking for you know how where is this opportunity going to struggle? Have I got clear water? In other words, what's ahead of me? Have I got uh, price based resistance ahead of me? Have I got volume resistance ahead of me? You know what is like to cause this this market to pause and reverse against me? And have I got enough in the trade? If I'm going to take a trade. Uh, and I'm going to put 10 or 15 or 20 points of risk on the table. Have I got that and maybe some more? But you're doing it from the perspective of looking at the chart. You're, it's not some quasi, well, I've got to have a three to one risk return ratio or two to one risk return. You know, I'm not going to risk 20 unless I can definitely return 40. Well, the market doesn't really care about that. You've got to look at it from a chart perspective. Look at it from the perspective of what is in the way ahead of your trade? Have I got strong resistance ahead? Have I not? Have I got support below me? Have I not? Um, and it's all of that, putting it all together and then deciding, OK, fine, I've got, you know, it looks pretty good. I'm going to take the trade and, you know, I'm comfortable with the fact that I can see ahead of me on the chart from a chart based perspective. You know, there's not uh, there's, there is nothing that is going to cause me a huge amount of difficulty in terms of that particular trading opportunity and sitting through congestion is is you know a lot of traders get bored when congestion breaks like this you know it, it starts to develop into congestion and they get bored go off and look at other things Anna and I like congestion phases we're looking at this you know this is this is building some decent channels here top and bottom it's channeling nicely so you know for a fact you're getting a strong resistance building you're getting a platform of support building here and once it breaks away from this, then you know for a fact the trend will start to develop because this is where trends are born. Trends are born in congestion phases. It's as simple as that. That's how they are created. That's why they are created. It's all part of Wyckoff. The longer a, a market is in congestion, then the stronger will be the subsequent trend. It's, it's Wyckoff's second law of, co of cause and effect. In other words, if the cause is great, then the effect will be great. If the cause is small, the effect will be small. It's all about time. So the longer a market is in congestion, then the more dramatic should be the consequent trend which develops thereafter. And it's all relative. If you're on a one minute chart, as we are here, then you're talking about a time, a trend which might last several minutes. If you're on an hourly chart, it's a trend which might last several hours and so on and so forth. You can see down here the trend monitor. We've had a little bit of transition, tried to go bearish, came back out again the other side. We're flip flopping around here. We're trying to maintain that bullish momentum. We've gone back into blue here. If we get through 960, then, you know, we could be off and away. So it's just a question of being patient and waiting. You've got to wait, wait, wait in this game. Let's have a look at the five minutes, see if that tells us anything different. This was the weakness. I signaled that earlier. You know, you've got a wick to the upper body. You've got good volume under there and the market hasn't gone anywhere. And if you look, uh, you're constantly looking at, at metrics as to, to benchmark candles. You know, you look at a candle and you look at the volume associated with it. Is this in agreement? That's fine. Then you start to look at this. You know, the market tried to rally. It was rallying on good volume, but it hasn't really gone anywhere. So it's looking at, at, at weakness. There's some selling going on in here. We've got more selling going on in this candle. We've got yet more in this one. We've got weakness here, weakness here. There's an awful lot of weakness going on here. So we're just waiting and you may not be able to see it. We've got a wick to the upper body here. The market's tried to rally again. Um, but it's really struggling at this level. Just keeping an eye on the VIX. Let's pull it over again for you. Pop it up full size. There we are. Still in congestion. You know, the markets, the, the VIX is trying to push up a little bit here. You know, it's 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 not falling as, as dramatically as it was earlier on. So 
you know, that's part of the reason that we're seeing this, this pause in the uh, move higher at the moment. Just see what we can see on the 10 minutes, similar sort of thing. You start to see that weakness coming in here, you know, it's not looking terribly strong. Higher volume here hasn't really gone anywhere. More volume driven in here hasn't gone anywhere. You know, the volume's falling away here and it's not looking great at the moment, but you know, that may change, may get a reaction, just have to wait and be patient. Keep an eye on what's going on on the 15 second, and that's a classic example of, of what I'm talking about. Here we are, we've got a market rallying and we've got falling volume. So we've got four steps down in volume and the market is trying to go higher. What's that, what that is telling you loud and clear is that that market is not going anywhere. Why? Because this is an anomaly. Because it's anomalous, because if the market is rising, we should see rising volume and we're not, we're seeing falling volume. Hence, it's an anomaly. Equally, in a falling market, if you see a falling market and you see falling volume, that's anomalous because there should be rising volume in a falling market. Now we're seeing that reaction take effect, that weakness coming in. It's really what's been signaled. It's been signaled through uh, in, in several different ways not least of all on the 15 second here, as soon as I would have seen that, that I would have jumped on that straight away because that's a clear signal of weakness. Got a two bar reversal here in the VPOC as well. Trend monitors has transitioned through pretty rapidly into red, starting to transition over here into red as well. Let's have a look at um, where this trade might go. Uh, this is a long way below, but these are the sort of things you're looking for. Okay, if we're going to take a short now, um, you'd look at this and think, okay, this is actually looking very nice. Why? Well, if we can get through this this fall away here in volume, if we can get down to sort of 880 here, then you know it should be happy days because the volume is falling away dramatically, which is nice. Then we hit this low volume node, and when we hit this low volume node, the price should go through there pretty swiftly. You can see it went through pretty swiftly on the way up. There's no reason not to expect it shouldn't go pretty swiftly on the way down. So that's good news. We've got virtually nothing in the way of price-based support coming into play. This is very minor. This has only been tested once. We've got a little bit stronger level here, this one, this blue level, which is just hidden behind the VPOC. Um, but these are a long, long way behind, a well, long, long way away. And in terms of where you know that trade might take you, this is a long way to go all the way down here. But you know everything's possible. The VIX is starting to tick up; it's back to 29. So hence the reason we're starting to see a little bit of a sell-off now. And you'd be keeping an eye on that, and you'd be trading short. It's just flicked back down again. So you know you might see a reaction higher on this, uh, on literally on this market. Um, but it's certainly trying to, to track higher the VIX and hence the reason you're starting to see this weakness come in. But in terms of trading opportunity, that is how you would look at it from a chart-based perspective. So you'd look at low volume node here, terrific, good news, fall away in volume, excellent, no price-based support coming into play, and we can go all the way back down to really this region or slightly above it, I suppose, where you'll like to see you know, some difficulty for that particular trade. So taking a trade, terrific. You know, you'd set your stop loss above here somewhere up at 960, jump in, you've got a nice run all the way down, assuming the market carries on that far. So there's nothing in the way on that particular time frame. So that's on three, then you go and have a look at five, for example, see what's in the way on five, pretty much the same actually, you've got low volume node here, uh, nothing in the way of price-based support, only really way, way down at that level there. So that's all good and dandy. Just up onto the tens, have a quick look here, and exactly the same. So you've got, you know, resist uh, the the weakness coming in here, starting to fall away now. VIX is trickling trickling up, and you've got low volume node here, right the way down to the volume point of control, and that's what it's shaping up to. Trend monitors now transitioned red, transition red on here, not changed yet on three. You wouldn't expect it, but you should see some sort of transitional color coming in there, either a darker blue or a darker red, uh, in due course. Nothing on five minute. You wouldn't expect it there just yet because we only gone through one candle but it's starting to build into quite a nice position weakness there higher volume weakness confirmed widespread candle good volume on that one you know the selling's coming in now um, and off we go down to the short side 
And that was just being patient, waiting, 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 waiting for the break, waiting for the move away, waiting for the move away from the volume point of control. Because when you're at the volume point of control, it's about the fulcrum of the market. That is where bearish and bullish sentiment is in agreement. And it, one or other of those two sides will have to be in then in disagreement. In other words, the weight of buying or selling will then start to move the market away and start to develop into the trade that you're about to take. And that's developing nicely. Just let's have a look and see what's going on in terms of the VIX. You can see the VIX is now starting to track up a little bit. You know, this is on 10, very minor moves here, but this is one you keep an eye on if you're scalping. It's on the one minute, so it's starting to push up. The five minute, you'd probably have this on one, two, three, something like that. But, you know, that's why the VIX is so important to have on your chart at any one time. I'm going to wrap it up there because uh, we have to run. Um, I think uh, little Bertie needs to have a walk as well. Um, just see if there are any questions I haven't answered. Uh, there are one or two. Sorry, I always have my chat box closed uh, when I'm in full flow. Sorry about that. Uh, didn't get any reminder emails. No, uh, sorry, apologies for that. Uh, we only noticed that about half an hour before the webinar. I have corrected that. These were copied across. And for some bizarre reason, it didn't copy across the notifications. So we have updated them and you will receive, I think it's one, two and four hours, something like that. Anyway, just to confirm, next week's session, everything is going back to Tuesday next week. That is when uh, we will be doing the London session in the morning and this session in the afternoon. It will both be on the uh, the Tuesday. So apologies, you will receive them, I can assure you, because I've corrected it on the, the GoToWebinar system. Uh, what is your parameter period on the accumulation setting on your six charts? Uh, good question, actually. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's probably on the default. Let's have a look. Um, uh, oh. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, what am I looking for? Um, lost my thread for a minute. Here we go. Sorry, completely lost my thread. Um, right, accumulation distribution. Those are my settings. That's what I've got at the moment. Those are the defaults, I believe, at any rate. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure they are the defaults. So I hope that answers that one for you. That's it. Thanks, Ray. And there we go. The tray is developing nicely. And uh, it's just a question of being patient and waiting for it to come. As, and as I mentioned here, you can now start to see the trend monitor. That's starting to transition through, just really confirming what is going on here and what is going on here. And if that develops into a longer term trend reversal, then clearly it will transition through right the way through, right the way through onto the 15 minute. The fix is ticking up now. It's now 29.1. So if you're short, you know, that's all good news. Just to wrap up very quickly, this is where you'll find all the indicators over at quantumtrading.com, uh, MT45, Ninja Trader 7 and 8. That's single license, same on MT45, so it covers both platforms. Trading View and TradeStation, yes, TradeStation is coming. Uh, both 9.5, which is the uh, partnership between TradeStation and Interactive Brokers. So if you have an Interactive Brokers account, you can link it straight through to TradeStation. So you have all the advantages of a deep discount brokerage, such as Interactive, linked through to TradeStation. You can trade, you can use all the power of TradeStation trading through Interactive. It's a powerful combination. So we've got indicators uh, developed on that. And then we've got version which runs on 9.5. Then we've got version 10 on TradeStation Securities. And uh, that will have all the bells and whistles, including radar screen. You've got radar screen on 9.5 as well. You've got all the bells and whistles on TradeStation 10. I know it's been a long time coming. We had a lot of uh, things we've had to sort out because we're doing two platforms at once, basically. Uh, but we are almost there, I'm delighted to say. Once we've done that, we'll be going back onto TradingView uh, because TradingView now offers us... Um, now offers us uh, the uh, Pine script, allowing us to draw uh, objects and line drawing. Um, and that means that uh, we can now port all the other indicators across onto TradingView. So if you are using, tra if you've invested in the full package of TradingView with us, or if you do so before we do that, which is going to be probably a couple of months or so, uh, we are holding the price. In other words, you will receive all those indicators free of charge. So if you have the full full uh, TradingView package already, 
at 600 and whatever it was, 666, 660, I think, something like that. Um, the price of that will go up to 894 to, to mirror the MT45 package. Um, but if you invest in the trading view, you'll get all those indicators free. So it's a great time to buy because rest assured, the price will go up once they are developed and ported across the trading view. Thereafter, we'll be... Um, we will be adding a lot of uh, uh, updates to all the platforms. Things that we developed on TradeStation will be back, back uh, uh, issuing into the indicators on the other platforms, of which you get them free of charge because you get everything free of charge here in terms of updates and, and renewals, all the rest of it. So that's where we are in terms of the indicators. This is the Forex Trading Program over at QuantumTradingEducation.com. It is the complete Forex Trading Program because that's what it is. That's It's everything in there. It took us... A, a long time to put this program together. We put a huge amount of thought into it. Um, we've got the five core modules, psychology, fundamental, relational, technical, and mechanics of trading. And then underneath it, all these other modules, there's 200 hours of video in here. We have the VPA trading room, which Hannah and I are there every single day for all our students. We answer questions and our students also interact with one another there. It's just a very friendly place. Um, we're very proud of the program. We've got a lot of students on it now. And of course, included in that, you get the full suite of trading indicators as well. You'll find Anna over at annacooling.com. You can find all the books here on uh, Amazon, on Kindle or in paperback. They're all there and we will be more adding more in due course. So thank you very much indeed for coming along today. Hope you've enjoyed it. We will be back, as I say, on Tuesday next week for both sessions, both the Forex session in the morning, 7.45 UK time, and this session, the US session at three o'clock UK time. And as soon as we've launched the TradeStation platform, we will be doing a separate session with TradeStation on 9.5 and 10. And we will probably do that on a different day because doing three webinars a day is a bit heavy. So we will probably put that one on for a different day. Haven't quite decided what time of the day it'll be, but um, we'll, we'll hopefully we can we will sort that out. So there we go. Thank you very much indeed for coming along today. Hope you've enjoyed it, and enjoy the rest of the trading session and uh, the rest of the trading week. And we will see you next week. Have a great week. See you soon. Stay safe and bye for now. <music>